How you doing? This is Brett. I've got Joe on. Uh, we are going to do a little bit different format here this week, as you may already know. And uh, we're going to do a TA session on the uh, indicators. So uh, what we're going to dive into really are the technical analysis uh, indicators, the crypto mastery indicators. So we're going to give people just a minute to uh, get started here. And um, I am just looking for one additional thing here and we'll kick things off. So uh, anyway, I'll kill the camera so you guys can see what I want to share with you. And uh, we'll come back and uh, get started here in just a minute. Joe, if you're on, if you want to say hi, that would be uh, great. And uh, we'll we'll cover some news. Uh, just kind of do that on the fly. I really wanted to focus on the indicators. Uh, hi, everyone. Thank you for joining us today. Happy New Year and welcome back to the game. <laughs> Yeah, happy new year, everyone. So this is going to be a little bit informal. If you guys have any questions, though, that you'd like to start with, that um, would be, uh, we can start with that. And uh, this is what I want to start with. So um, thanks, Myrene, for putting these together. Great job. So this is going to be focused on crypto mastery, as we said. And so we're going to cover some news. Overall market, hot movers, probably not going to do the basket as much. Really want to, I know most of you have been asking for kind of a deep dive on the indicators and uh, certainly it's going to be interactive. So, you know, with that, a couple things here. When you guys are searching news, by the way, the, um, you know, there's a lot out there that maybe makes sense, maybe doesn't. There's, you know, I generally kind of fly through it. There's a few places that I like. Crypto Panic is one. The uh, Daily Huddle is another one, and then uh, Blockworks uh, is uh, a good one. Uh, let's see, Blockworks Solutions, Blockwork. Which one is it? Uh, the Block. Sorry. And um, I don't know, Joe. Where do you usually check your news? Again, this is going to be kind of informal, but sometimes the best place is just to Google. But yeah, Joe, what do you what do you normally look at? Um, where I go to is uh, this uh, web page called Coinograph. Mm -hmm. may have heard of it they have some pretty good news on there um you know and uh also sometimes there's some good articles to read on that coin 360. yeah you know along with so, the uh, <clears throat> sorry go ahead joe oh uh, no go ahead sorry yeah so guys usually i'll just google it the, you know the the ones that rise to the top google's pretty good at sorting these things there's so much news out there that um you know, uh, it's you're not going to digest all of it. So since uh, I don't want to have too abrupt of departure on what we normally do here, the um, but going forward, we're going to kind of try out this new format. So I'm skimming this. I don't see anything other than I'm seeing some news on Litecoin lately that it might be setting up here. Bitcoin turns 14 today. That's interesting somewhat. There's some emotional ties there. But the one I do want to come back around on a couple of things that are worrisome and could lead to that leg down we've been wondering if will happen so uh let's see daily hodl ben cowan saying generational crypto market opportunities in 2023 i agree with that uh, a little bit probably in first quarter in the second quarter and um so there's the daily hodl's got pretty good articles here and so i would um kind of call your attention to skim through these on your own time crypto panic here skimming through this the news aggregator the way to open up these articles is you click on them on the left pane and then on the right side there's this little arrow that can open up the article and so uh you know hearing some people talking about litecoin could be moving up maybe we'll look at that i did add it to our sort of basket on the active trader side but let me just jump back over here daily hodl as uh, as it sounds daily hodl.com and um you know, Ben Cowan's a pretty smart guy. Uh, there's some other articles here. Just kind of skimming it to get a feel for what, uh, what's going on. And again, we did talk about this, that Michael Saylor, Michael Strategy, as I call them together, kind of like the Winklevi. They sold um, a bunch of Bitcoin for tax harvesting and then they bought it back. So there's no, it's sort of non-news. Anyways, not much happening there. I'm, I want to jump over these things, guys, because there's two things that I think are encompassing and more important and um one of them is related to grayscale so i was uh walking taking a walk this morning saw some news that um you know this war is certainly not uh going away anytime soon and if it escalates that can spook the market 
and so uh, apparently we just wiped out a whole bunch of Russians and uh, armaments and things with uh, our HIMARS, which not to get into politics or wars, uh, if this thing escalates, you know, it's going to spook people. I think my spidey sense is it looks like we're bottoming in the charts, which to me is a little bit it's too easy almost like the other shoe may still drop could be escalation in the war uh the other thing though let's talk about grayscale briefly because the um the news last night is uh the winklevoss one of them cameron uh winklevoss one of the winklevi has uh basically called out barry um uh, from the uh, digital currency group and the owner of that and basically said hey you guys since genesis blew up you guys owe us, my customers, $900 billion, $900 million, sorry. And uh, they're playing a little bit of, um, you know, hide and seek there. And he basically called him out and he said, if you don't uh, take care of this by January 8th, then that's a deadline, you know, basically or else. Where this ties back together is if Digital Currency Group has to sell uh, it's Grayscale Holdings because it owns Grayscale. That would be really bad. Mark Yusko was on a news program this morning saying that would be really bad. And the connotation is worse than we expect. So I don't want to scare anybody. We'll still watch the um, signals in the markets. And in the near term, I'm bullish on some altcoins. But uh, it does pay to have a macro idea on things. So that's what I'm watching and keeping an eye on. OK, so I was just talking to some a family member today about lightening up just in case. So on uh, some Ethereum, you know, with the idea of if it does have a big drop to buy back lower in dollar cost average, if you're going to hold it through all of this, no problem. But this uh, anything can happen right now. We're still in the Wild West. So that's all of the news, really, that I want to uh, dive into here. Um, Joe, have you seen anything? I think rather than have this structured and read through articles, it's kind of a, a good thing to skim and we'll get your feedback, you guys, what uh, format you like. But um, yeah, Joe, are you seeing anything that we should pay attention to? And then uh, we can, can dive into some charts here. Well, I mean, look, this Friday is uh, the big unemployment report. Um, so I think, uh, you know, the Fed meets this month. And uh, I think that's one of the big things coming up is if uh, they're going to go half on the rates or not. So uh, I think for the next couple of weeks, things are going to kind of be um, unpredictable. And then as we start to get more into the middle of this month, we'll start to see a little bit more clear, uh, clearer direction. Yeah. Yeah, so exactly. Well, let's do this. Let's jump over to the charts because that's, you know, that's usually what I am watching. And you show me the charts, I'll tell you the news. And so, where did that go? Got a bunch of windows open here, guys, and it's, oh, I see why. All right, bear with me, guys. It's right here. Uh, <laughs> thought that, yeah, I think I prefer the go to meeting over this uh, go to webinar, guys. All right, so that's why it was hiding back behind here. All right, so I'll tell you what, we, um, not going to go through the macro. We do that in tomorrow's class. Today, I wanted to focus on the, uh, the how to use the indicators. And just seeing the comments here, Kyla, Kaya, thank you. I uh, realize that now. So why don't we do this and just walk through those. If you guys have any questions on them in particular, let us know. Uh, I think... Um, we're going to do another one Thursday night, or I am. That's uh, a little bit more dedicated to uh, all of these. But since Joe is on, we're going to, you know, Thursday, I can really talk about what I watch and what I follow. And then, uh, but since Joe's here, we could really uh, focus on the proprietary indicators that uh, he's created and we've created together. So what I'm, I'm going to do this. I'm going to create a new chart, a blank chart here. And put that on Bitcoin, and then we will create a brand new one, a clean one. So make a copy. So it is a, not the same URL. Great. All right. Now I'll remove everything and we'll start from scratch. How about that? And I'll even remove the indicator. So here we have a chart of uh, phantom coin. I'm trying to get Bitcoin on here. There. 
All right, so first thing you want to do, and um, if you guys are new here, the indicators that you want to make sure that you have, let's see, I want to bring this up here on the other screen. I'll drag this over. So basically, the ERI, the early reversal indicator, the trend strength indicator, the uh, signal line, the trend indicator, and uh, these are the ones that you'd want to be looking for right here, you guys. And um, right there. So, and then there's a couple bonus ones. So the early reversal indicator, the trend strength indicator, the signal line, the crypto trend predictor, the volatility index. We have the average true range and uh, also the uh, radar. And uh, I think that about covers it. So that's going to look like this. And let's go through adding those in. This, I think you guys have already figured out and we have uh, in the trainings. By the way, guys, we uh, in the Crypto Mastery members area, we, um, as a 2023 project, we're moving everything over into one platform. So uh, the team's working on that. There will be new login links for that. So uh, if that's down today, we're just migrating that. It'll be back up here soon. So, uh, but watch your emails for uh, your new logins for that, okay? Um, now you're gonna see a lot in mine because unfortunately we can't delete these unless uh, we've figured out how to do that. Uh, I don't know, Joe. Yeah, so we've been tinkering around with lots of different indicators. So the ones you're looking for, I'll just start with the uh, early reversal indicator. So you won't have this many in here. And by the way, if you don't see all the ones that I wanna share with you today, just refresh your browser. So the ERI is our first one. Anything else, disregard. We're not using these other ones. You're not missing out on anything. Uh, and Joe and I play around with these, and he's got some for other instances. So ERI is first. You're going to click on that, and I would click on the star to favorite that. The ERI oscillator is like it's essentially the same indicator. Instead of an arrow, though, it's going to show an oscillation. Now, I think let's do this. Let's do these at the same time and not overwhelm everybody with all of them. So the ERI, hence the name, Early Reversal Indicator, is designed to catch a trend reversal early. And this is one we discovered accidentally almost, and um, we were actually going to uh, sort of put this one out to pasture and archive it, but then noticed a unique pattern that when it did this and then that, it was a very high probability it would follow through, especially when it confirms with the trend strength indicator and on the weekly time frame. So this is usually what we start out with, and at least what I start out with. Uh, the weekly basis, just to jump over here. Now, the reason this is so powerful, and we didn't know what we had last year. And uh, so going back though, look at this. On a weekly basis, the ERI called the bottom back in March of 2020, and also the tops up here. Okay, now you're probably, this is the key question that new people have trouble with. They say, well, Brett, what about all these arrows in the middle? And that's where the trend strength indicator comes in to confirm it. So I'm gonna start here and just sort of uh, walk through this though before I show that to you. But the indicator called the bottom here in the summer of 2021 to the day and to the week and the tops, the major tops all the way down, and even these little minor ones. So I really love it on the weekly. It's also a big reason I don't think we've bottomed yet on Bitcoin. So, you know, mark my words, but I reserve the right to be wrong. Nobody's, you know, but I, I really firmly believe we haven't uh, seen the, the bigger drop here. And if we do, and we see the weekly print, that's when we want to be paying attention. Now, why is that so? I just want to dive into this a little bit. The reason these print, by the way, now some of you probably don't want to go in this much detail. Some of you do. So the thing is, you don't need to watch the bottom one. I've always wanted to have an indicator that was simple to follow, but backed on real quants and science and math and all the stuff that Joe's a wizard at. Okay. So for those of you that want to understand why it works, we're following the footsteps of the elephants. Right. So let me zoom out a little bit and we'll pick a point in time. Let's call this the market top here on November of 2021, where I was, this is one of the reasons I was telling people in ActiveTrader to get out and get into cash at last November. 
one of the reasons. Um, and the ERI here, the reason that this thing flagged, so we just watch this date so that you're not distracted. I'll come down in the oscillator. So the uh, the way this works is without going into all of the math and details, but when the center line, it's essentially an oscillator and a modified stochastic. Is that right, Joe? It's I mean, we don't need to go into all the math behind it, but it's it's a smooth stochastic um, with other things added on. Isn't that basically what we're looking at? Yes, that's correct. Okay, thanks, Joe. Uh, you know, I want to involve you. I just um, I'm going to give my input on it, and then I'd love to get your input because uh, you're always dropping nuances and things. So the re the pattern that we recognized here, and again, so it's this red line that was the call of the top of the markets. And the short version is we noticed that when the oscillator gets above 98, and there's a weaker version, there's different levels, but when it gets up in this 98 to 100 level and then back down below 80, within two or three time periods, that's the signal. And that's what we're following in the footsteps of the elephants. Because what this means is a lot of money came out in a short period of time. Now, who moves the markets? It's the whales and institutions. So this is that footprint. Okay, similarly, and that was the bearish and go, uh, sorry, the bearish early reversal indicator. On the other side, these down here, now these aren't as good. If you really want to learn the nuances of the ERI, the deeper or higher it goes and the velocity and slope of back below the 80 line or back above the 20 line has something to do with it. So here we see an, a green ERI, but you see how it didn't quite get down below enough. It went down below five, so it'll still print an arrow, but usually these are the smaller arrows. Um, we're working on um, kind of making this a little bit more um, easier to use because there's some variables. Now this middle line, you see it changes color. That has to do with a Keltner band. Uh, I don't know that we want to, we can touch on that if you guys want to. I tell you what, if anybody wants to know that, let us know, otherwise we'll skip that because you don't really need to know that part. But stay with me. So down here now, this came down to below three. The alternative is below three or all the way down to zero and then back above 20 within three time periods. So it works on daily, weekly, monthly. So from here, one time period, two time periods, three time periods. So that gave a green line. Now the green and red lines correspond exactly to the green and red arrows. Um, the reason I don't have any here is I have these, these turned off, the less strong ones. And um, there's a new version we're tinkering with, so we'll get that out soon. But essentially, if I wanted to turn that on on the chart, and you really don't need to do a lot of this. I have it uh, turned off on mine, I believe. <clears throat> uh, and um, anyway, I won't, won't get into that. But but really, you're watching for the arrows that print on the chart. So on the green side, right here, we have one here, and we have one here where it went down below 3 and then back above 20 right in this range. So we have a lot to cover, you guys. I just I, I don't want to be incomplete with it, but I want to show you a good example on the bullish side. So if we zoom out here, the best example now, see this one back in March of 2020. And uh, by the way, you can double click in your main chart to show or hide your other charts. So right down in here, we saw this came all the way down to the zero line. Let me move this over and I'll zoom in out for you guys. Came all the way down to the zero line just about, and then one time period, two time periods, you know, and then, so that was the bottom of the, the COVID crash. So you're, it's, it takes a little practice to, to know what to look for. You might say, well, I see lots of red lines. Why didn't they all go down? Well, they had, they, they did in many cases, just not the big ones. Now let's perfect segue into the trend strength indicator and I'll finish that point, And then I want to ask Joe for his nuances on this, but, um, and now, now you guys, there's a, a TSI and a TSI entry. Um, I'll let Joe talk about that here in a minute. But And the TSI entry is essentially the same. It just has a little bit different uh, flag on it. Okay, so it's a little bit more clear. And um, so what we are um, wanting to look for it is a confirmation of two things. So I'm going to hide this one. At the basic level, the market bottom here, we had the TSI going green, and then right here is, is the red going to green on the trend strength indicator 
also above 20. So with anything, it's new, but it's not that hard, right? So similarly, where these are invalidated, right here we had a red, uh, well, here we had a red ERI confirmed green going to red, had a big drop, and then green, red to green, up. Here we had red, uh, red ERI, but it didn't confirm on this. It didn't come below the 20 line until here. When these two confirm, high, high probability, and we'll add on these other ones, but this is the main thing I'm watching for, and um, really has given us an edge. Now, this is the weekly again. It does also work in the daily when they're both in alignment, it's even better. So up here, we didn't have an ERI. Now, you can, there are some nuances to this. The trend strength indicator is uh, very strong by itself, especially with other indications like this is a bearish engulfing candle. But this wasn't that big of a drop, uh, you know, where we saw the 50%, but where we really saw the uh, signals here. And let's come back down. We have a, a bullish ERI there and the red going to green down below. Let me make it a little bigger so you guys can see this a bit bigger. And uh, do you guys see that? So see if there's, where do my questions go? Uh, it's down here. Um, and I don't see any questions. But, and please, guys, there are no stupid questions. I, you know, this is, <laughs> you have to walk before you run. The point of this class is really make sure you understand the nuances. So back in here again, and Joe, feel free to chime in at any time if you'd like to. I just want to make sure they get this part. You know, ERI arrow there, trend strength in, indicator red to green. Now, here's a nuance. One of the students, and let me just see uh, if uh, Rick is here. So Rick is here. Yeah, so um, yeah, Rick had asked me this and um, some clarification on how this works, and he's watching the line crossover. And uh, and that's mostly right. That's the early indication, but really I'm watching for the confirmation over the 20 line. And uh, so both of these, you know, legging in and out of positions is the ideal way to do it if you – see an ERI and then it goes red to green, that would be an early signal. Okay, this would be a place, if you're more advanced, more risk tolerant to put in some of the position. And then I would add more personally as it breaks the 20 line. You know, if you have the time, not everyone has the time to watch these. And uh, so uh, that would be your your correct criteria. You'll learn over time, one of those two. But I like to, to really play it safe. Once it plays over, crosses over that 20 line, that's and the ERI is green. That's when I usually am saying, okay, this looks good to me. So similarly, we came up here. ERI was red, bearish, engulfing. TSI broke down below 80. So this was a fake out. And uh, this was, if you heard me talk about the Wyckoff patterns, uh, this is the up thrust after distribution. And these are patterns that um, are designed to fake out the markets. And so this one here, uh, we. Um, but it also broke back above. I mean, this was a little bit of an anomaly here. Market tops and bottoms. But the top itself, had we been watching, and I was talking about this, so we pushed up higher. And I said, this doesn't feel right. Bearish engulfing candle, early reversal, TSI going green to red. When these start to line up, that's when you pay attention. Similarly here, okay, this one it was invalidated, the green ERI, because why? TSI didn't break the 20 line. It finally did here, and we saw a bit of a rally, but it reversed. And so these are the signals I'm mostly watching for. And so we um, uh, aren't seeing arrows printing on these because they – I don't know, Joe. I think we have to get the developer to look into that because uh, I would have thought we would have seen arrows on these two on the red side. And for some reason, they're not printing for me. Hmm. Well, but that's why I like to use the oscillator because the red lines uh, do uh, line up at the same spots. And so, I'm going to take a screenshot of that actually. But um, either way, the, the mo major inflection points are the ones where they do print. Hang on a second. Blue, blue. Oh, I think I know. Yeah, I think I know. Um, let me turn on that. Um, just don't want to overdo it, with people. The the reasons are with the color of that midline 
Yeah. <clears throat> I have to finish this thought, guys, but I really don't want to confuse anybody. You don't need to. I'll worry about this. So, But I want to be thorough. So the Keltner band... Where uh, ERI Oscillator, where's that Keltner band? Keltner channel, that's going to be on the actual Arrows version. Here. So you can toggle this off here. The Keltner band right now. Yeah. <clears throat> I, I, so I want to be thorough on this so you guys understand why it's not lagging. So, well, this one should have been. So it's below the Keltner band. In the rick in there is so all right so when it's above the keltner band it's a higher probability the keltner band is like a rubber band like a bollinger band so when the, this is red uh and um the blue is uh the blue is when it's within the keltner band and if it's um that's the ideal uh scenario so the close of the candle Okay. Joe, do you want to chime in on this? Because um, I feel like I may be confusing people. Uh, well, the thing is, is that um, basically uh, what we're doing here is, is that, uh, you know, we're aligning the two cycles. So you got one cycle here, which is showing with the ERI, and this is doing one type of mask. And then you have the TSI, which is doing a different type of mask. So what actually we're looking for is we're looking for uh, the green vertical line and the TSI to match. It's uh, So, you know, the Bitcoin right now is not really showing a good example on this, but if you could just change that, if you don't mind, right, to uh, a coin IOT, A, USD, on the daily. IOT, this one? A, yeah, USD. Uh, is that, uh, Binance US? Right. Let me find an exchange that um, okay, we'll use Binance. Just to use as an example, and then make that sure. a daily. Okay. Yeah, I'll go back to the Bitcoin daily too because I want to show you that I want people to have confidence in uh, in it. So, um, do you want me to zoom in or zoom out? Well, I just wanted to just just uh, call your attention to the to right here today where it's a fresh uh, ERI print. Mm hmm. Okay, and that's matching the TSI. So I just wanted to give an example to everyone, um, something in here where we have a match uh, as far as like in this cycle. And then now we're looking for this to uh, proceed higher or we're looking for additional confirmations with the other chart overlays at this point. Yeah. And you could scale into your position um, accordingly from here. Right, and, and also point out that uh, I like when these, the ERI prints, two or three times so i'm going to go back to bitcoin in a minute on the daily so these patterns here when there's two or three so a light green light green dark green the more of those that print in a row and then the tsi goes green this was actually and this was a nice little trade we're looking for these base hit swing trades that was 15 percent, not huge but uh, on the downside we had a double bearish eri and then the tsi went to red and then this big downtrend down here so uh, let me jump back. Let me turn off this Keltner band. But essentially, we're looking at is it above, below, or inside of the Keltner band? And that has to do with the center oscillation color. I, I'm going to do a more in-depth video on that because we're getting uh, going down a rabbit hole here. So let me go back to uh, Bitcoin because, and then we'll look at Ethereum. I find that personally, the um, this works better on some of the higher flyers like Bitcoin, Ethereum. And uh, not always on the alts, but sometimes they all have their personalities. What we want to teach you guys, though, is to look for the confluence on these. And uh, it's just looking back and just coming back in time. On the daily, there's a bit of noise, so I understand that. But here's that daily on the December or November of 2021 that coincided with the weekly. And that's really what I'm looking for. In the uh, newer version of the ERI that we're going to come out with in the first quarter, it'll eliminate a lot of the noise in the middle here. So what I'm going to do is turn off that Keltner channel like that so that it's easier to read. And uh, just go back again, the top of the markets back in um, 
of last year, the summer here, July of 2021, we saw the bottom here, and that was perfect alignment with that TSI coming up. So we don't have to look at this one down here. For simplicity, and if you're new, just look at the ERI and TSI. So green arrow and red to green down there. If I expand upon it, went down to about below three and back above 20. And uh, that's all, that was the bottom of the summertime. And then we pushed up here and then we came back down. If you remember into September, those three arrows descending. And then that third one with the <clears throat> TSI pushing up above that 20 line here again. And then we had that nice rally up into November. And then we had the reversal, okay? And coinciding with it coming down below the 80 line. Does everyone get that? Okay, so that's probably a good segue. I'll show Ethereum. And uh, I'm using it mostly on Bitcoin and Ethereum as a barometer. It's uh, a little unclear right now because the markets are just sort of drifting sideways. And so if it's not clear, I'm kind of mostly staying out, but waiting for that big drop and bounce. Uh, and again, um, yeah, you know, there might be some better examples here. I guess I'm, I'm being, my, I, I know what I'm zeroing in on. I just want to be mindful of you guys might be look like, might look like a lot of spaghetti mess here. And so, uh, and so certainly if you have any questions, let me know. This might be a good time to layer in some of the other ones too for confluence. So uh, now we've, we've covered the ERI, the two versions of that and the trend strength indicator. Uh, Joe, do you, can you just describe what that trend strength indicator is really looking for in layman's terms? And, uh, well, basically in here, what we're looking for is that when it gets down to the uh, green shaded area, that's considered oversold. So the way the uh, stochastics work are, is that you have a oversold and an overbrought condition. The overbrought is the blue, the oversold is the green. So um, as the oscillator, um, the oscillator moves from one spectrum to the other. So uh, right now the oscillator is moving up into the blue, which is considered overbrought. Now the concept here is, is that when it gets into the green area, and if you build it up a little bit, um, that's considered oversold. You look for the TSI to move from that oversold zone up to the blue. And when it does, it'll show with these little green dots. So you get the red dots when the price is going down and then price reaches that oversold condition. And then from that oversold condition, you look for the green dots and especially that first green dot, because that first green dot is generally a, like a tap on the back to let you know you're doing the right thing. Like if you're looking to trade or if you're in the position or if you're looking for that um, that next leg in the market, well, you're going to need that green dot coming out of that oversold zone. And um, what traders do is, is that they use this as a gauge to judge market strength. And uh, that's how we came up with hence the name trend strength indicator because we're using it in a way where we're judging how strong uh, that trend could be potentially be because we're taking this and we're using it complementary to the other chart overlays uh, which show clues. And the concept is, is that the more clues or the more confirmations that we get through the chart overlays, the more we're going to be correct on the trade that we have. Right. Yeah, good. Thanks for uh for, for chiming in on that. Uh, here's a visual too that might make sense and this is a uh, maybe a little bit more clear from our presentations. Uh this is from the uh presentation many of you saw this. Sorry guys, I have it queued up on my side. I want to show this. Oh, huh, interesting. Well, all right, hang on a second. Oh, it's hidden. That's why. Apologies. All right. Like I said, this is an informal training. That one. So, um, yeah, so this shows all these in Confluence. So we're going to add to these. So here's a good visual. Up top, if you see them stacked, and we're going to add these together, the early reversal, the green arrows, and uh, we have the trend strength indicator, which we just covered. Now we're going to look at the signal line when that also goes from red to green for bullish scenarios. The ball index, uh, also a great tool. I love it on the shorter time frames. And uh, what's great about the ball index is it's not common that it gets down below in the red zone. 
on a daily or a weekly basis, but we're down in those zones right now. So we're going to know when this is truly bottoming. And uh, that's what we want to be watching for. The trend indicator here with the key and the bell, also when this is in confluence, the key is a warning that the trend may be turning when that center line goes from red to green. And when the bell prints, that's the buy signal. So with that in mind, why don't we, uh, actually one more thing I want to show is the average true range. So we'll look at this as well. And this uh, I like on shorter time frames. So the thing is, unfortunately, there's not one single indicator. You know, Joe and I are talking about a super indicator that does all this behind the scenes, but uh, it's a bit tricky to do all that, and we want you guys to understand these uh, first because uh, they are based on different things, and if they all align, then the more consensus, the more powerful. So I think we've covered that. Okay, so with that in mind, uh, let's see. I had uh, wanted to jump over. Where's my clean chart? And that was, I think, the uh, Bitcoin chart here. All right, so let's come into this in the indicators again under invite only and add the signal line. So that's going to look like this with a puzzle piece. And uh, hopefully you guys are, are following along here so that uh, we cover all the questions. Now over on the left, if you want to turn off all of the labels, you just have to come over here and um, what is going on here today? So Huh, it's disappeared, the little down arrow. It's showing the, the ERI. Weird. It's always when you're doing something live, things get... See this little drop down, you guys? I guess because I don't have enough on there. That's why the ERI... Okay, so I guess that's interesting. Normally I have more indicators on and I don't have that drop down arrow. So uh, if you want to turn these off, you can just hit the little hide button there. Okay, so now we have the, uh, now I'm going to use the TSI entry and just talk about that for a second, because essentially that's the same thing. Um, Joe, can you explain the difference between these? And um, I want to, if you guys don't have both of these, let us know. The trend strength entry is a just, it's the same thing, except the turning point arrow is larger. It's enlarged, so it's easier to see. So if you look at this TSI here, it's going to correspond with this uh, green arrow there, but I don't want to, I want to make sure Joe explains it because that's, um, um, some people are asking that privately, Joe. <clears throat> yes. I mean, look, if um, this uh, TSI entry is a newer version really of the TSI and the distinct difference is, is, is that um, just like how I was explaining that when the market gets cut to the oversold condition um, and then turns, right, we wanted to highlight that with um, with something with a more visual, so that it's easier um, to see the turning point. So what happens here is that when we get to that oversold condition, uh, we see in here the green uh, flag, and that's letting you know that um, it has turned. And if you're looking for a uh, potential uh, entry into the condition, you want to look for that can that entry right after you get that green dot and uh, that's also an alert so if you want to set that as an alert you right click um, on the chart overlay and you'll see the setting in there and you can also use that as a way in here to position yourself Okay, and can you explain kind of on this the overbought, oversold condition on the alert? Because uh, to be honest, usually what I'm doing is using crossing up over the the 20 line. Um, how do people use the overbought, oversold alert? Uh, look, this is really easy. It's as you see it. If you want that red dot up there in the green, and that's considered overbought condition, you choose mm -hmm. the red. And if you want the green um, for the oversold for the buy. You choose the green. Right. So, and I'll, let me clarify that. So, basically, what you're saying is when this turns to the larger green one, that it would alert you. And yeah. so, so, that's a very important clarification, you guys. So, um, Dev, you should be using alerts. That's how you leverage your time and not having to be in front of the market all day. Uh, and by the way, first of all, I want to show you that if you don't, I, I have changed my default settings. And I think the default may be circles or dots. 
although correct me if I'm wrong, Joe, but uh, I like to use this little chevron shape here. You guys can change these. If you want to use circles or crosses or diamonds, you can do that in here under the uh, settings and style. Uh, but uh, the uh, to me, the default, I like this. It's called the, um, <clears throat> the um, I want to call it a chevron, but it always throws me off what they call it. It's called the, sh the label up and label down. So you can use triangles if you want and that sort of thing. But as far as setting the alerts, if you wanted to be alerted when this came down, let's say we wanted to know on Bitcoin, the next time it came down and turned into a large sort of reversal signal, we would just click on that, go into uh, add an alert, and we can do oversold when it starts to turn higher. And if you want to know every time that it changes, we could go once per bar close. Okay, and you can rename this TSI turning higher or whatever you want to call that. I may be out of alerts, by the way. I know I, it flagged from yesterday. So, but the other way that I like to do it is when it crosses above the 20 line. So to do that, you can go on to add alerts and go instead crossing up the 20 line. Okay. So um, I'm going to set this as well. You can also change what this says, TSI crossing up. You don't need all the format in there. So, and there we go. So now I'll be alerted the next time, A, it comes down and turns red to green. And then also when it comes back above that 20 line. So that's pretty important. I, and I would recommend you do that on daily and weekly basis. So um, in terms of Bitcoin on the daily, we have an ERI going green. We have the TSI technically green. I'm going to get rid of this one because we don't need both of them. And um, But it's just sort of flatlining. Here's a nuance for you guys. You want to see a nice slope like back in here, back in here. We're just kind of going sideways. And uh, now technically it's a buy, but it doesn't quite feel right. So we'll look over our signal line. Our signal line is still red and it's flatlining. Here's the, the third indicator in the series. So again, I love it when it comes down, a signal line comes down on a deep slope and then turns red to green. You can set alerts on this as well. So right click under, oops, I hit the wrong one. Click on the indicator so these little circles appear. And then you can right click and go to add alert. Uh, there are other ways to reach this. If you want to use this this version too, the gear icon up left, top left, and um, uh, or the three dots would get you to the alerts. Okay, so here again, we'd want to say when it goes um, crosses into green. Uh, Joe, what's what would be the proper way to set an alert for this, where it goes from red to the uh, green dot? Uh, on this, you have the uh, field right there, uh, which you uh, a cross uh, right above the cross it's an icon so you see here yeah right there you choose the first icon which is the cross it's the dot and now it's the, the alert for each time when it crosses is that the little puzzle piece yes okay so this is this is how you would do it i actually haven't set alerts on these before yes that's correct and uh, you put on there um once per bar if you want every time when it crosses yeah so, okay, so that's good to know. And um, so I would, you know, I typically, yeah, here's, <laughs> you'll, you'll start running out of alerts. I've got 400 alerts and I've just used them all and that's the maximum that um, they allow. But at any rate, you guys can use your judgment on those. It is, all of these can be adjusted and alerts. If you want it to signal every time, then it's one per bar close. So, uh, but in this case, I love it when it comes down in the deep negative and then it sort of comes up with velocity and slope. See how we have this sort of, sideways motion that's indication that there's not a lot of volume in the markets and it's sort of indecision so that's why i would refer to the weekly here okay and that's why uh, this is kind of flatlining so right now we've got two that are bullish one that's sort of sidelined the other thing that i would recommend to and uh, we'll turn on the uh, trend indicator but the uh, radar is your other indicator you should have always on the charts to be toggled on and off so let's do this let's add the radar and also our trend indicator. So if you guys are following along, you want to go down and look for the uh, trend indicator. There's, uh, it's the one with the key on it. And um, you know, whenever we release a new one, you'll get a notice that uh, there's a new version of it. So there's the trend indicator. There's two on mine, but just use this one here, which says the whichever one shows up for you. And then the radar is most likely going to be down at the bottom. Radar screener 1.0. Okay, so I'm going to add both of these. 
And, uh, and so that's another thing to weigh in on. If you have, we have got two green arrows here, but we've got mostly red on the radar. Yesterday, I was showing examples of a coin that was all green. All green is usually go, especially if you have these other indicators confirming. But the uh, nuance on these is if you see things just going flat, you know, we need to see some kind of a movement in the markets. And, uh, and so what I'm going to do here on the uh, trend indicator also is zoom in. Now, this one is the four. We call these the four horsemen, or I do. Anyway, because it's easier to remember. So without the radar, the ERI, I'm going to go back to weekly just for a minute because I want to see some more. Uh, um, okay, it's interesting. Weekly is uh, green on the on the uh, signal line. So essentially, when we see these in alignment, let me show you a good, good example. I'm going to go left because what we are looking for are ideal scenarios. And, you know, when in doubt, you should stay out. So let's see, going back a bit, I'm gonna look for a bullish scenario because that's what we're waiting on. So let's remove all this noise here and just go left. I think that's the best thing to do because we're looking for this kind of a development where we start seeing uh, these things line up here, the TSI going green, bullish ERIs, we have a, a negative T, a signal line starting to turn green and then we start to see the trend indicator. Now I'm gonna open that up because it is a bit hard to read at these levels. And these are the four main ones that we're watching on the daily and weekly. And I promise you guys, you're going to get this. Uh, you'll understand this soon enough. The signal line, I'm going to open that up. Now, this one, when you see that green arrow, that means that the midline has changed from red to green. Uh, this is another type of oscillator Joe's created. And uh, the, the green arrow coincides with um, the first sort of change from red to green in a while and usually aligns with the key. The key means that the trend may be changing. The bell is the buy signal. And I always joke that you might expect Mario Brothers to come running through here grabbing all the coins. So and this is this is that scenario we are waiting for you guys. So while we're in a sideways low volume trading channel that will change in sometime in 2023, 2024 and likely we'll have these uh, that go back and forth and tradable rallies on the way up. The ideal market conditions are when we see multiple cycles. So key, bell, and then you go up to the uh, little bag of money as your take profits. Now, this one largely went sideways, but still it was building. And then we had another key that would have. So here you would have said take, take profits or get out. You would have kind of gotten out even. Then another key went negative for a bit. Then the bell right here and then these cycles so the way joe's coded this and maybe joe you could touch on the uh, number cycle so it's seven steps and then a pause so one two three four five is take some profits now that's always recommended uh, some people wait for this one the bag of money that uh which is fun as well so there would have been a perfect time to exit and then pause the key, we might be continuing, then the bell, so you would have come back in at the ideal point as a reset, and then one, two, three, four, five, six, take money again, pause, and you might say, well, you should have just stayed in the whole time. Now, certainly you can, and I recommend always you know, keep a moon bag when we get these ideal scenarios, but oftentimes you'll see it come right up to a bag of money, take profits, and then it pulls back and, um, and then runs again. So... But this was quite a run here, Joe. And these are the conditions we're waiting for, especially when they all align. So please talk about this a little bit and what this indicator does and what it looks for and any nuances that uh, you'd like to add. Yes. Uh, look, this is uh, perfect uh, for the newbie trader in here. And this is uh, trend following. So what this is doing is, is that this is looking for a condition um, that says, yes, the market is trending. And when the condition is met, it shows it by turning the color of the bars green. Um, then there's a sequence. Generally, um, within a cycle, um, you have um, the starting point and then you have an exhaustion point. The starting point here, in this case, is when it starts to go green and then it shows the key. The key is representing um, the beginning of a potential cycle or wave uh, or a new step in the market. And once we start to, um, after the bell, we get the, um, after the key, we get the bell alert. So the sequence is the key is a warning, 
that, hey, we may get a potential signal. And after the key is the bell alert, um, which uh, if you right click on the indicator, um, you can set that alert for the bell so you don't miss it. Yeah. And uh, yes. And once you have the bell, which is your signal, and you position yourself in the trade, now you look for the higher number sequence to confirm your position. So you're basically looking for higher highs, and you can see that when the um, oscillator starts to show higher numeric values. So when you're seeing it go up one, two, three, four, that's a representation of the market price um, trending higher, and um, as it goes through that sequence, the sequence repeats itself over. So the, the total numbers, it goes up to a seven, and then it repeats the, the sequence of the key again. And uh, up until the point, the market stops trending. Now, when the um, program is able to determine that the market is no longer trending, the program will stop showing the numbers and stop showing the color green for the bars and then you will just see it shut off so if you're if you're in the trade and you see the uh the uh, trend indicator shut off and show white bars that's an early clue to exit your positioning and if you're looking to get into the trade well then you can look for when the bars turn back green as a new positioning to get back into the trend. Yeah, I'm just trying to draw this here and get it color coordinated. Uh, you're explaining it perfectly. And um, so this was a good example. It's sometimes it's hard, you guys, to do these live and try to find the ideal example or hunting around. And so, but that's just, and, and so that's exactly what Joe is saying. It doesn't mean to go short. It just means there's no trend when it goes, the midline goes from, Kind of red, uh, green to red, and the bars lose their green. So that's a pause and a, you know, I call it gas in the tank. And early, early on stock trading, the longer something goes sideways, sideways, it's just building up for the run and filling the gas in the tank. And so sure enough, here then we had the key and the bell back in December of 2020, and that was of course right when the rally started and really took off. So right up here had to take profits. So I love that it has this built-in reminder to take profits. And then, you know, it's better to take profits than let it go down. Is that right? So here and then key is sort of, all right, take a breath, wait and see. The bell is a confirmation. And then it came back up again. In a trending market, this is all you need. The ERI, TSI are more for catching the pivot and trying to capture more of that. That's why we use them in conjunction. Again, ERI, early reversal indicator, trend strength indicator is number two, signal line, and then the trend. This is the trend indicator. And you have done very well uh, if you got in December 2020. Of course, hindsight's, it's always, uh, you know, uh, 2020 uh, looking back, but nice push up here into January. Might have gotten out here, gone sideways. This I imagine this is probably where the TSI, you look at that. So right as a TSI, triggered to sell and the signal triggered to sell we don't even really need to look at the stock chart in this case so this would have been the exit criteria we do use other things like bollinger bands etc but but this is really all the main thing we focus on so when they start going red look you would have had some great profits in here take gotten out of the markets until coming back over here the uh, uh would have been a, a tsi green signal line going green here's another example of that great slope so certainly utilize these and open them up. I, um, I'm actually watching on my iPads. So I've got a four time period, one minute, three minute, 15 and um, four hour. And I might just jump over to that to show you how these are. These are fractal. They work on all time patterns. So, but you can see this deep slope here turned from red to green. And that would have been February of 2021. That's when things really started taking off. And then right after that, let me do this here. Okay. This is a great example because we had an early version when the TSI went green. It was a couple of days early. And then the signal line crossed. And then we had the key and the bell. And uh, then we just really had a, a nice rally there from February. So if we open that back up, key, bell, all the way up here. 
take profits. It did pull back a little bit. The key said we might get another cycle. If you bought at the bell, you bought in a little lower, right? So you nailed it, would have nailed it here. You know, look, I, again, easy to look backwards, but these are the ideal patterns to learn. And then another buy signal all the way up here, take profits at the bag of money. And it said the key fired, but the bell didn't. So you would have gotten out right at the top before that pullback. Uh, ostensibly, and then came back down here, key and a bell, pushed up here, kind of went sideways, you know, wouldn't have been a loser, but that's why there's this uh, initial take profit signal. So, you know, in an ideal world, you would, if you got in at the key, you would take some profits at the first dollar sign, and then the rest at the uh, bag of money, holding maybe 10%. If it continues higher, and just if you're long-term bullish, always good to have some money, some skin in the game. Okay. And then, of course, the market started rolling over in May. Let me just go here. And then we came down into uh, the summer of 2021 and some chop. You know, the other indicators would have been telling us probably not to get into this market until July of 2021. Again, we had this arrow, the key in the bell. And that was also when our ERI here signaled the signal line and the TSI. So hopefully you guys are getting this and it makes sense. Uh, please, if you have any questions, let us know. First time see anything is a little bit tricky. And um, what I might do right now, Joe, is uh, if you guys want to, I'm going to hop over here to this time frame on uh, Bitcoin. This is the one minute, three minute, 15 minute, and the four hour. So what I want to call your attention to is I'm going to open up the three minute here and uh, we're going to look at the uh, average true range because this is a question that came up recently uh, on these uh, other bars. The uh, the So these are reversal bars. The average true range here to find that is you'd come up under the indicators invite only and then it's Let's see, uh, it's not an alphanumeric that just kind of throws it in there when you added them. But this one the, looks like a, what do you call this? Like a, it's not a triangle, it's sort of a measured triangle. There's a name for one of these things, I can't think of it, but it's this dynamic ATR and um, drafting tool or some kind. But the, so when these turn from yellow, that indicates a reversal's coming. And uh, similarly with the blue on the average true range. So this is a useful tool on shorter time frames. But I also wanted to call attention to the uh, ERI, the trend strength indicator is uh, is excellent on these uh, shorter time frames. I don't really use the ERI as much because it can be a bit all over the place. But if you're day trading here, you can see this on this three minute or day swing trading. I don't recommend doing a lot of day trading, but we had the uh, bearish ERI there. TSI went from red to green came all the way down here, bullish ERI, but didn't confirm with the trend strength indicator until here, pushed up. So this um, is something we were using a lot in our sniper trader class. It's just the markets were so manipulated last summer that we stopped teaching that. It was kind of a beta class. But uh, even on the, the uh, let's see, this is a one minute, I'm sorry. Uh, that's a one minute. So shorter time frames. Uh, this is the three minute here. So the a average true range would have triggered the uh, getting out of that market. So as it went from red to green, it says exit and confirmed with the, I like the 2150 exponential moving averages. So also a confirmation that this was going lower. And so anyway, but um, wanted to zero in on, this is one I don't use as much one minute, three minute, and I'm not gonna look at this uh, 15 minute here because I've got some other stuff on it. Let's take a look at the four hour here real quick. And uh, I'm waiting on questions. Very helpful, thank you, Tori. Sometimes we're up here without a net and we don't know um, if you guys are lost or if this is helpful or not. And, and you know, it's just gonna take time and some immersion, but when you get it, it's just that, it just comes together. Uh, so what this is down below is a is a stochastics RSI that Joe built. It's the basis of the radar. So you don't need to really watch this if you have your radar turned on. And um, yeah, so this should be helpful too. Do you see how, get rid of this line here, I'm not sure what that is. On this stochastics oscillator, it's heading down. 
zoom really in on that when the blue line is below the red line that's bearish and heading lower we can see that it's heading lower and that's why it's red on the uh, 240 version that's four hours okay on the daily that's bullish uh joe do you want to talk about that a little bit and then i might pull up the other indicators but i want to want them to understand the relationship with the radar mostly i want them to sort of understand what's happening so that they can believe and trust them you, you know to be honest when we first started using the radar i was a little unclear on how to blend it into everything and the mind just has to sort of lay those neurons and so it understands and i think it's important to remember when we were beginners and seeing it for the first time as with anything so um yeah joe maybe you could talk about that and the radar why we created it and uh how the relationship you know to this kind of stochastic oscillator and why it's uh, important uh, the radar, you know, does what the humans cannot do. Uh, what it does is, is it watches multiple time frames. So the radar is a way that confirms the trend progression. The, the radar can be used two different ways. It can be used on the longer term trends. Like for anyone that's more of a long term trader, you can set the settings in there for the daily, for the weekly. Um, for the uh, four-hour chart, the 240, uh, for the 60. And uh, what that'll do is, is it'll let you know what the overall trend is. So, you know, if you're looking in there for the market to be in a trending condition, you're looking for uh, the radar to be green on the higher time frames to be confirming your position. So a lot of times when we get the ERI and you get positioned into the trade, these uh, chart overlays are positioning you early. So when you get into the trade, it might not be, you might not get instant gratification in the market moving right away. The, the market may just start to go sideways from the time you, when you get the signal. And at that point, that's where the radar really shines. Because once you're in the trade, now you're looking for um, what's my other time frames doing? So you have a choice. You know, you can look at multiple monitors, which there's some traders that look at four screens, five screens, six screens, or you can set the time frames in your radar and let the technology work for you. Um, good trading is all about processing the information and you wanna process the information in a way where it's easy and simple. And when you see the color green, that lets you know that the decision you made is starting to come to fruition and the trend is starting to emerge. Great. Yeah, that was a great explanation. And 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 so you can adjust those as I'll show you again on if I have a daily chart up or a monthly, you can go in and change that. So for your longer term trends, you can see this on the uh, overlay here that the it's mostly green. The 240 uh, is minutes. So that's four hours, the daily, obviously, the weekly, the monthly. And um, in terms of, you know, the longer time frames, in this case, I have an arrow drawing higher. You have to learn the nuances. All green is is the best. We're waiting for that at the bottom. At the market tops last year, it was all red. And that was another signal to get out of the markets. I know some of you got out and listened and and now are wishing some of you are wishing you had but this this is really the purpose of these tools to give you the confidence to make decisions i think a lot of traders lose because they are in a um, kind of a deer in headlights uh, analysis paralysis mindset and that's why like joe said these tools do what the human mind cannot so on the lower left one in this uh, it's, a, it's a one hour, four hour daily, weekly, uh, usually that on shorter time frames. But that weekly, the longer time frame takes precedence. So if it's uh, monthly and weekly or green and the daily is red, that tells me we could pull in for a few days and then head higher. You know, So hopefully that makes sense. And so that's the radar. I think we've covered uh, most of these. That we meant to and we're coming right up on the hour certainly guys if you have questions please ask i see your chats and um because sometimes i get people asking questions and i'm wondering why they didn't ask in class because we're here for you the vol index uh, we haven't talked about so we'll do that and then uh we've covered everything what i would suggest though and, and if you're new to these is don't try to learn all of them all at once i would start on the um, daily 
with the um, ERI and TSI and start layering in the other ones. So uh, on the vol index here, let me just let me jump over to Saul for a second. He's already have this loaded, and this is a one hour, four hour. Solana is seeing a little bit of a push higher here, which we were wondering and thinking that it might. So on a four hour, we've got some. Um, I know this is a, a bunch to look at here. I'm going to hide some of these. The okay. Yeah, so a four hour, I'm going to zoom in or open some of these up. So there's the trend indicator on the four hour. If you're swing trading intraday, nice trend up. We've got a bull, sorry, a bell. So we had one run of that. We have a bell signal on the four hour, but we're also overbought on this vol index. This is the vol index, it's a different type of oscillator. So in this case, I um, now it can stay up here for extended times and stay below for extended times. So this might still be a buy, but where I would be getting out of this is the vol index coming back below that 80 line again. All of these oscillators, whether it's somewhat self-fulfilling or not, it's the 20 line and the 80 line are the important parts. This is overbought, but it can stay overbought for quite a while, and it can stay oversold for quite a while. My favorite times to get into things are when the vol index comes out of the red zone and turns gray. Uh, can be can have fake outs like this one, but um, when they do and you start to notice patterns like this, when they go, they usually will go to the other side. Not always, but the lower they go and break higher, they usually go up to the other one, especially in confluence with other indicators. And back in uh, here, we did we saw the TSI turning green. Uh, didn't get an ERI, but that's okay. We did have the signal line. I'm going to move it to the bottom, though. I'm used to seeing this down below there. Okay. So in terms of where we are now or recently, the this on the uh, vol index right there, which was um, back on December of 20, 20, December 29th, rather. So it came up here, nice velocity, came up, broke that 20 line, and headed straight up to the top. And that was in conjunction with the, the uh, we had, see, this is a perfect setup, you guys. ERI here on December 29th, the, the vol index went above there on the same day. So that's where you might put in, let's say you had, let's say you had $10,000 just to make math easy to go into Sol. You might say, you might put $2,500 in based on the vol index and the ERI aligning. And you might hold a little bit uh, on the side. And then the trend strength indicator here goes green and breaks the 20 lines. You might add, allocate another, you know, say um, 2,500 or whatever. And then, then the signal line goes red to green. That might be a third confirming signal, might allocate another 2,500. And if you're using the dollar cost average worksheet, I've made that interactive so it's easy to uh, do that and it'll kind of let you know how much left you have if your total budget was 10k for bitcoin and you're now in 7500 it'll show you you've got 2500 more to invest well you might then wait for as you might have guessed by now the key in the bell and that would be the four horsemen uh, if you want to call it something else but and that would be actually all five of these in alignment and if you get all five and let's turn on the radar. I mean, these are the sweet spots that, uh, you know, it's a bit overbought now. So the four hours showing down, but that's just an oscillation. I imagine back here, this would have been all green. ERI, TSI, signal line, vol index, key in a bell. That's when things are all systems go and the rocket can launch. And so if you're new, it's better to wait and just wait for them all to align. As you get more experienced, you might pick and choose what you want to look at. The other thing I would look at is a higher time frame, uh, but usually I'm looking at a one hour, four hour, or a daily weekly. So um, I think that's probably a good place to sort of wind things down. We usually keep this class to an hour and we really focused in on how to use the indicators. Uh, in the Thursday class I'm going to do, we can stay on a little bit longer. And I might layer in some of the other traditional indicators like the uh, EMAs. But since we're on this subject, you know, the EMAs are very powerful. Those are, you know, those you can get inside of the uh, TradingView system. And the easy way to add those and adjust them, just type in EMA for exponential moving average. 
there the default will be like a nine period so you can just double click on or right click on that and come in and change the uh, color uh, to make that stand out let's um uh, I guess I'll use purple and then make the line a little thicker. You could do that. So, and then I'll change that. I don't really use a nine. Some people do. It's a bit too much noise for me, but anyway, there it is. So um, I'm just going to get rid of that. Uh, but then the 21 and 50 are my staples. That's what I watch. And uh, it's like, oh, let me get rid of that here. I'll just hide it. So basically what we're seeing here though, and how we use this in conjunction as um, things come down, bullish ERI, but that's why, again, early reversal indicator. The reason we were looking, we were looking for an earlier reversal indicator because some of the the later indicators were missing part of the move. So what you have is in your hands, whether you realize it or not, is the perfect system for catching early reversals, and then as the other ones, kind of the middle to longer range indicators start lining up, you're allocating more as they line up more confluence more confidence more likelihood it goes higher and you're de-risking especially when starting to come in here you see the 21 day crossing above the 50 day moving average so solana is in a short-term swing I'd, I'd want to look at it on a daily so don't go and buy this necessarily but um but i do like this big volume spike at this reversal point so you'll start to see these things and develop your own sense uh, also, these work on all securities, uh, anything you can pull up in TradingView, stocks, ETFs, et cetera. Uh, these signals also line up. On Thursday, we'll look at also adding things in like Bollinger Bands. You know, uh, this is one of my sell points. You can see invariably in crypto that uh, on all time frames, if they get above the this. Now, this is a modified Bollinger Band. I use a third standard deviation. Uh, the default is two. But crypto is so volatile, it doesn't really help us. You know, I used to, before I discovered this, I was trying to gauge, okay, when it's when it's 20% outside the Bollinger Band or 15%, but that's not, now we just come in and modify it. Come into settings, go to three standard deviations. So for taking profits, when these get above the Bollinger Bands or below, they almost always revert back to the mean. Okay, so sure enough here, got up there, perfect take profit point, pulled back in, went sideways, pushed up higher, got up above, touched that top upper Bollinger Bands, pulling back. So um, this is how we use these in conjunction with um, the other indicators and in certain market conditions. You know, I will look at uh, other things like uh, Ichimoku's and Fibonacci's, but, uh, but not right now. We want to be catching the swings in our edge again and swing trading is buying on the reversals, selling at the overbought levels here. So uh, hopefully that's been helpful, you guys. And um, Joe, is there anything else you'd like to uh, add in? And I'll just jump over back to a daily chart here for anyone that would like to kind of see this sign off. But, um, you know, you'll start to be able to see this almost like the matrix. And, um, you know, when in doubt, just going to zoom out. But when you start to see it, you can't unsee it, if you've ever heard that saying. And so, yeah, Joe, any any uh, nuances? I, I've been talking most of the time. I want to just kind of get out of the way, but uh, you're the master and the creator of these things. So, uh, yeah, I'll leave it with you to sign off and say goodbye and anything else you'd like to say to people. And, um, you know, we'll kind of have some version of this weekly. We'll kind of move, migrate back to the old format a little bit. And look at news in our basket but this class i really wanted to make sure people came and understood how the indicators play off of each other and when they start to align together that just increases your confidence and probability yeah i mean look well said in there and and pretty much the the eri is perfect um one of my favorite chart overlays and it's perfect for anyone new that's starting off uh, because it shows in there the different uh, pivots of the market. So the ERI can be used in there not only for uh, early entry, but it can also be used to take profits. And um, it's one of the things we didn't mention today, but I use the ERI um, for exiting out of market because there is those different case points, whereas that um, the ERI catches like the exact top. And um, for anyone that's running the ERI, if you're in the position and you do get an ERI, it's always a good a level where you want to maybe scale out of your position uh, accordingly.
Yeah, no, I'm glad you mentioned that. Especially, guys, again, using traditional indicators in conjunction at likely resistance levels. So this trend line here, um, if you didn't have it drawn, you may not have realized, but that's why in off markets when things are quiet, I'm looking for these sort of lines in the sand. I'll turn off the ERI for a second, but you know this here, if it weren't there, you may not realize that that uh, there's a resistance point right here. Okay, so drawing it right through there, I mean, in retrospect, hey, sure enough, there it is. But in the moment, you may not know that. Turn on the ERI, which said, hey, um, this thing's turning over. Again, we're following the footsteps of the whales, of the algos, whatever they are. And some of it's self-fulfilling, but it, that, it doesn't matter. If you've ever kind of wondered, why does this work? And some people say technical analysis doesn't work. Um, I think, you know, that's, um, they don't know what they're talking about, especially they don't have what we have here. But right here, ideal resistance zone, ERI, that would be enough for me to take profits and sure enough, things reversed. Same thing here, pushed higher, had an ERI at that resistance line, perfect exit, got out of it. And uh, we had a double ERI here, might have pushed higher if the TSI confirmed, and it did. So that would have been an entry point there, pushed up exactly to the um, this ERI, rolled over. So you see how you can start to play these things. Um, this pattern here is a bit unusual. It's just sideways. <clears throat> Pardon me. But what we're waiting for is some kind of a move and break out. And really what we're building is a, is a wedge pattern here. And it's... Um, you know, these typically resolve to the upside. So we'll see. And when in doubt, I always when in doubt, zoom out as well. So got this weekly pattern, just nothing there yet. Nothing on either side of these. So that tells me there's just money on the sidelines, not willing to commit. A lot of it waiting for the right signals. <clears throat> the right signal is something like this. And when we get that uh, on a weekly basis uh, with a TSI and everything lining up, then that's when I think we're going to push higher. Now, these markets, not to kind of belabor the point, but, you know, we're going to have some trouble getting higher. But at some point going into 2024, we're going to see that next bull run and push higher to the 150,000, 160, 100, even to, I mean, we don't know. Let's between 150 to 200,000. Uh, I think that's in the cards. But, uh, you know, we need that signal. When we see it, we'll alert you guys, but want it, you guys to understand what we're waiting and watching for. So any questions? Uh, great. So Kai, thank you. Uh, this is very helpful. Joe and Brett. Uh, Tori says thank you and um, very helpful. Yeah, so the feedback's helpful. I know we got off to a little bit of a bumpy start here, but I think if you just zero in on these things, you'll really start to see it. And you can't even zoom out. <clears throat> I haven't really talked about this. The, the, the month, I don't do it two weeks, but the monthly uh, isn't really on the ERI a big signal but on the other ones it is so the trend tsi so just play around with things you'll start to notice patterns and that's when you know you're on the right track when you start noticing things uh that um you hadn't noticed before so anyway um thanks everybody thanks joe for being here and we'll get this recording up and out soon and um please join us tomorrow join me tomorrow for my active the active trader class m3 active trader at noon and Thursday, uh, we're going to be, I'm going to do another one of these. Some of you couldn't join because we do have clients in Australia and the UK. And uh, and so I believe it's 5 p.m. Eastern so that uh, everybody can be on. And um, I mean, Joe, you're welcome to join if you'd like, but um, uh, no obligation there. Let me just pull this over. Be great to have you, though. It's going to be uh, 5 p.m. Here, let me just uh, open this up, and that we 5 p.m. Sorry, that's the wrong one. Yeah, I mean 5 p.m. Eastern, 9 a.m. Sydney, and 10 p.m. UK. So if you're watching this replay, watch. So uh, we'll get a link out today, tomorrow. Myrene may already have put it in the. I think she did put it in the uh, signal chat. So all right, everybody, we'll let you go. Uh, have a great uh, rest of the week. Um, just we are waiting for something to happen. Anything, not much happening. So uh, we'll cover the alts and some of the other things that we're seeing uh, tomorrow's class. Okay. All right. Take care, everyone. Bye. Thank you, everyone, for joining us. Take care. Bye. Thanks, Joe.